Hi, in this tutorial I want to talk about the color changer and how that's useful as, uh, as an effect, but it's also useful for doing other effects. You know, a lot of um, stuff I want to talk about in this tutorial and other tutorials is how you can combine effects, and this tutorial will show you how to do just that. So first of all, to get into the change color, you go into Filters and Effects, and it's the first entry, at least right now it is, and you select Change Color. And then you select any color on the image. For instance, I'll select this red on the flower, and you can see it's changed the color already. And it does that to let you know that that's, to give you some sort of visual representation of that's the color that you changed. And what you can see here in the color shift is that's where it's shifted the color. So you see the selected hue, which was the original red, and then the new hue, you see I can change the hue, it tells you what the new color is. And so as I change the color shift slider, you can see the color change on the color I selected. I can select the leaves, for example, and then select a different color for those that area. And so for this example, if I just wanted to change the red color, you can see that it allows me to change this color without changing any other color in the picture. So that's one small example of what it can do. What you can also do is uh, an effect, uh, I think Adobe calls it the pop art effect or whatever, but what you can do is you can desaturate the non-selected colors by pressing the button that says exactly that, desaturate unselected colors. And then what you can do is you can select the color. Another thing I should point out too is, is that when you choose a color, you can just run the mouse. If you click the mouse and keep it clicked, you can run the mouse around and it will just select the color so you can narrow in on the, on the color that you want. So if I want, for instance, to get the center area, I can just focus on that. And so since I've clicked desaturate unselected colors, it's only changing the color of the area that I want. So if I want the original color, I can just set the color shift to zero. And then as I move the mouse around, you can see that it's only selecting the color that I, uh, that I want and then desaturating everything else, which is kind of a nice effect. For example, if that's what I wanted, it looks kind of nice. And then I can say, let's say I wanted blue, for example. I can press accept here. And what happens a lot is when you convert things to black and white, it, um, it lacks contrast because the color is, uh, was adding contrast. And so what you can do is you can just add contrast to it and, and to just play with the RGB controls. You can see it, it looks pretty interesting once you once you start doing that. And then I can change the hue here too as well to, to do whatever I want. So going back to the uh, original file for a second and then going back into the change color, what I can do again is I can select my color and then I can click the more options box which gives me a lot more options, and I'll, and I'll explain those in just a second. So before, when I selected a color, and then what I could do is I could change the color. So you can see I selected the flower, uh, the red area again, and then I could change that color, and then I could desaturate the non-selected color. Well, when I have the more options uh, button open, it gives me all these options, where what I can do now is I can change both colors. Now I can change the color that's not selected and the color that is selected to just really play around and get different hues. And then I can also change the saturation. So what I can do is that instead of just desaturating the background, I can just subdue it a little bit to still give me the essence of color in the background, but to make you know this foreground area more prominent, which can be an interesting effect too. So another thing that I can do is that Remember I said I can I can play with the mouse here and get a different color, but it, you can see, what you can see is you'll see the selected color area move as I move the mouse around. So I can use this slider too to narrow in more of what I want. So let's say I want to increase the saturation here, and then what I can do is I can just move this slider and you can see, let's say, let's say I want to get that center area, you can see that I'm really focusing in on that with this slider, and then I can overlap a little bit and do what I want. And then what I can do is I can bring out the saturation, bring down the saturation of the non-selected colors so that I get a really interesting effect. I basically have the same colors, but what I'm doing is I'm separating the saturation between the selected color where I've upped the saturation and then this other color, the non-selected colors where, you see if the saturation is the same, it's oversaturated, but if I just do it, it has a really interesting effect. And so that's another thing that you can do with it. And now what I want to show is how to use this 
what I'm doing here with another effect to show how you can mix effects and to get even more dramatic effects and um, other sorts of scenarios. Go back to the original picture and then what I'll do is go back in the color changer and then what I want to do is I want to focus in on the center of the flower and then do what I did before where I just, instead of desaturating the entire background, the non-selected color, I'm going to go ahead and just subdue it a little bit and then as you can see I'm focusing in on the, on the center of the picture, the, the yellow area. And then what I want to do is I want to subdue the, the background just a little bit. And now that I've done that, what I can do is I can add some contrast. Because now it's kind of acting like a little bit of a black and white picture since it has less color, it's always nice to add contrast to it to bring out the definition that the, the, the higher amount of color was adding before. So now I can go into the photographic filter and choose the uh, artistic color. And as you can see, I just could have selected a number of different colors, but I stayed with red. And so as you can see full screen, it really makes uh, an interesting picture. What the artistic color does is it changes the picture to the same color. And here I'm using the soft focus to add a soft focus to it just to give it kind of a glow. And I'll explain the artistic color in another, uh, another tutorial. And so if you look at the uh, original picture versus this picture, it's, it's actually quite different. It's just a different picture. And so what I want to do now is I want to go to the original picture and then do the same thing with the artistic color. Again, what the artistic color does is it orients all of the color in the picture to the same color. So you can see it took the color, the, the brightness is about the same, it's just all red. And it's brighter, and so if you compare it with the one that I did before, you can see it's quite a bit different. And this is an example of mixing um, effects. So if I hadn't used the change color to subdue the colors, I would have had the picture on the right. But since I did that, I have the picture on the left, which I think is a very interesting, a much different picture for sure. And so that's an example of how you can use the change color and really just a lot of effects in general and mix them with, with different effects to create an entirely new effect. And so now what I can do is I can add, a, a, say, a, a vignette or another soft glow like I did before, or a vignette and then just really stylize my picture. So another example might be this picture. If I go into the chat, there's lots of things you can do with this picture. There's, there's a lot of things that you can do when you start to orient tones to a, a similar value. When you uh, have a picture that you still want to have some color in, but you get rid of a lot of the colors that can distract us from parts of the picture. For example, with this picture, I can go back and the change colors and I can, let's just say I click this red, for example. At first it looks horrible because it's changed everything purple, but if I just change it back to where it was, so I'm really isolating just things with red tones, for example, and then desaturate the rest of the colors, you can see it's really just brought out the faces on these women here and it, and it still has the background. Uh, back there to to give some sort of depth to the picture, but when I uh, put the colors back in there, you can see it, ju it just has a different tone to the picture. And so with the change colors, for example, you can just really experiment. Like here, you can see now I'm isolating the blues, which gives it more of a black and white picture. It gives it a, a, just a, a kind of more of a black and white detail to it. And so as I isolate the blues, it looks more like a duotone. And so you can definitely do lots of things with the change color where on the surface it might just seem like it just has one thing that it can offer you when it, in fact it can do quite a few things.